Hey guys, it's Bernard here from Living to Learn. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm going to go through part two of my video on the core kit I carry. I reckon it's probably going to go to three parts because after this video, I pretty much only got like miscellaneous stuff and uh, maintenance kits and small things. So I'll probably just bang it all into one video. So it'll probably be part two of three of uh, my kit video. So what I'm going to talk about today is my shelter system and my sleep system. Uh, sleep systems probably like most years take up most of my kit in terms of size and, and weight and it's something that I spent a long time evolving and uh, started out with like a sleeping bag from Argos and a, f a foam mat, roll out mat, yoga mat type thing and strapped onto the side of the bag in a tent that was Halfords and gradually went down the road of hammocking and um, got into the, got a tarp and moved on then to uh, going, going to ground and that's where the kit came from so like the last time I've laid the stuff out in the ground uh, I've laid the stuff out and we're going to just talk through it bit by bit Talk about how I got to this point with, with my stuff and hopefully you guys will get some ideas. Like I said before, if you guys have any questions, want to know anything about the kit or where I got it um, or what ideas or what I might be able to tell you about ways to improve your kit, comment section and of course the Living to Learn community page on Facebook. Um, anybody who's not a member, there will be a link in the description. And um, there are some cool videos on there already about kits and sleep systems. Uh, I know John Bishop's covered his kit pretty recently. He's covered a, uh, cut a lot of weight out of it, and fair play to him. He really, really, um, he really butchered it. So as John Bishop has covered his kit, I think Paddy's covered his kit as well, and Joe's done a fairly comprehensive video on his sleep system and the importance of uh, choosing the right gear for you. So I won't ramble on anymore. We'll, uh, we'll set up and we'll start. Right guys, so here we are. We've got all the stuff laid out in the ground. So it basically breaks down to shelter system with uh, some crazy high-vis cord that um, I got as a result, recently as a result of Paddy Carroll complaining at camps about constantly running into my guy lines. So if you miss this now, Paddy, that's your own bloody fault. Um, so we'll start with shelter. Uh, my tarp is the DD Superlight tarp. Um, we've probably seen a bit of coverage about this on the Facebook page from a couple of guys now have have bought into it. I started out with a DD XL tarp to go over a hammock and. Like most people, probably when they go down the tarp route, I made this mistake of assuming that I was going to need buckets of space. I was going to need um, the biggest tarp I could possibly get. Uh, and it, it's great. I still have it. And I won't sell it because when I know I'm going out and the weather is going to be particularly bad. Or I know I'm going to get stuck in really, really heavy rain. Or there's a couple of guys going out who mightn't have tarps. It's a handy thing to have to have such a large tarp. The XL tarp I think is 4x3.5 meters, which isn't the largest DD do to do it 4x4 as well, which a couple of the guys have. Um which has been dubbed Hotel California. But it's um it was just too big. It was too large. It was probably about the same size as my roll mat packed. So I just wanted to I wanted to cut weight and size, pack size more so than anything else and the 3x3 three three wasn't that much of a step down and I, I ruminated on going into the super light sort of category for a while because there's a tendency among super light stuff to not be very robust it tends to fail and they're designed for true hiking not bushcraft activities and, and in, their, in their role they perform really really well but I have to say I've had this now for six, seven, seven, eight, six, six to eight months, not 100% sure. 
and it's brilliant. It weighs 400 and I don't know if you can see that, yeah, 460 grams, excluding the pegs, which are absolute garbage. Throw them away as soon as you get them or find another use for them. Uh, and it's 3 by 2.9 meters, so it's not quite an exact square, but you can do pretty much all this, this square tarp configurations. So 3 by 3 is plenty for, for pretty much all weather. Um, it's just it's it's just about adaptability with a tarp. You can go for diamond configurations, A frames, lean twos, and it's just weather dependent, weather dependent, wind dependent, and just how you feel. Some people like to have a slightly more enclosed space. I know during the summer I'll tend to set these up as um as leaners, and uh, I'll just sleep uh, quite quite open, and then in winter. Um, recently at the, the last couple of camps I've set it up as um, a tarp tent I'll hopefully um, do some fancy editing and put some pictures in around this time but yeah um, it's a really really versatile tarp really really small like very small for what it is and um, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a piece of kit that I, I, I don't think I'd ever I don't think I've regretted buying it all the only thing I will say about it is, is that the tabs on it, the tie out points seem fragile, they're not, but in order to kind of, um, in order to kind of reinforce them, ignore the messy guidelines, I've just tied pieces of shock cord, bungee cord onto it, onto some of the major tie out points, and that basically means if the wind kicks up or if I'm putting extreme amounts of pressure on, um, the ridge line this can give it a little bit of give so it means it'll hold tension but if the wind kicks up you'll get a little bit of stretch out of it and that's why I've gone and got the the high vis shock cord now and um, you can get that quite cheap off eBay Chinese websites and stuff so there's no need to go and spend big money on it but it's a good little addition to your kit just just kind of uh, gives you a bit more security with the weather and also this stuff's really really good for Prusik knots, um, which I believe Joe has covered before. If not, we'll we'll do a video and cover it. But uh, Prusik knots are basically a go around the ridge line and through your tabs on your tarp. You'll put maybe um, another piece of cord or a little stick or a tent peg or whatever through it, and it's a tension and self tension and knot. So when there's lateral tension on it, on uh, on a Prusik knot, it will hold tight. But if you release that lateral tension, you can slide it up and down the guy line. It means that you can really tighten the ridge line on your tarp. It means you get a, a really, really strong, um, strong uh, apex on your tarp, which is kind of important. It stops bellying and stops uh, puddles forming. So yeah, um, I went down the road of Superlight with the tarp and I don't regret it. I know a lot of guys have gone down the same road since and they don't regret it. So it is a great bit of kit. There are other tarps available. DD just seem to have really cornered the budget tarp market. And like I think for I think 70 to 90 euro. I could be wrong on that. But like it, it's a great tarp. And you can go down the Sil Nylon route if you wanted to as well. But I find I don't I don't I don't think it's necessary. So that's the DD Super Light. Um what else in terms of shelter? As I've mentioned. This will be attached, pre-attached. It's going to be cut into, I'm not 100% sure what length, maybe 30 foot. And then I'll have a couple of corner tie-outs with smaller pieces on it. That will be cut, pre-cut. It's just I've only got it recently, so it'll be pre-cut and it'll be put on it. And that is uh, going to make my tarp big pimping. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, just as an aside, on occasion, I will bring this out with me. It's the DD Superlight hammock. Um, I did, like I said, I started out hammocking uh, when I went into the bushcrafty, bushcrafty route. It's um, it's just something that I, I, I found that's a little bit too faffy. There's just a bit too much to it for me. Um, I tended to wake up quite cold quite a lot of the time and I spent money on under blankets. 
There's nothing wrong with under blankets. They, they work, but they just add more stuff that you have to carry. And it just seemed unnecessary. And then when I went to ground, I haven't looked back since. But I bought the super light set. I use it as um, as a seat on occasion. Bring it out on day hikes. It weighs nothing, 260 grams, including the set of uh, tree huggers. which are quite good and these little things which are soft shackle carabiners so instead of carrying a standard carabiner you carry these and they're made of am steel which has um, really really high breaking strain so whoopee slings are these so instead of using a paracord or a hammock slings you'll use am steel and that's really really light really really strong and really really adjustable but uh Soft shackle carabiners, they bite on themselves using a, a, a self tension and knot, and they are ridiculously strong. A little bit scary at first, but if you're going down a lighter route or you want to reduce bulk, they're a great little thing, a great little way to do it. Uh, you, it is scary, and you will you will find yourself worrying whether or not it's going to hold. But I can assure you, it will hold. I've um, I really really acted the maggot in my hammock, and yeah, it um they hold so that's a good little a good little um a good little way to cut some weight they do they i think they're around the same price as standard carabiners on dd so they're the soft shackle carabiners from dd they came with the hammock so if you are going down the, the route of cutting weight it's not a bad option um so i think that shelter pretty much covered i do i do want to buy a tent um what i found is uh, as the Living to Learn page has grown and as my experience has grown I will be taking on larger trips, hiking trips, multi-day trips uh, into places where I haven't gone before and uh, when the summer rolls around and you've got midges to deal with and ticks to deal with and um, if you're in an area you don't know where the conditions are something you're not going to be 100% sure of a tent is, isn't a bad way to go. So I am going down the road of getting a tent as well for exactly that situation. Um, it's just not something I've, I've got yet. I have a couple of tents, but they're all cheap. They're all massive. And uh, they're all like four person, which is ridiculous for one, per one person. So, yeah. So I think that's pretty much my shelter wrapped up. Um, we'll move on to the sleep system now. So with my sleep system... Um, I basically wanted to get a system that I could trust all year round. Um, I haven't got the money, I'm sure, like a lot of you guys, to go and buy uh, a summer bag and a winter bag. And I wanted to get the best I could get for my money. I also wanted a system that was versatile, that I knew I could use in the middle of the summer when it's dry. Or in the middle of the summer it's raining in the knee deep muck in the middle of winter or yeah just all year round and I spent a lot of time researching I went down the route of uh, synthetic bags that were costing a lot of money and they weren't packing down that small don't get me wrong synthetic bags are, are, are great really really you can get some really really good bags I know I've seen some bags that I really, really am jealous of uh, out on camps with Living to Learn. But after a lot of research, I, I, I went down the route of a down bag. And it's in, it's in here. It's um, a bag that actually a, a couple of guys have, um, have bought since have, since I've seen it in the flesh. It's the Kelty Cosmic Dry Down 21 Fahrenheit bag down bag it's um so stuff's down pretty small now this bag is rated down to minus six degrees celsius so it's um it sounds like overkill for the summer but it's really just about um it's just about how you use your bag um i know a lot of guys prefer to have a two season bag and then go to a three or four season for the winter like i said i just had the money so I wanted to go down the route of something that I could use all year round and this is what I went with. So 
There we go. This bag is um, probably one of the entry level budget bags for um, for Darren sleeping bags. Uh, I think it retails anywhere between 150 and 150 and 200 euro on um, places like Amazon. You can get them off a few different websites. I got mine on Amazon, and it's 550 fill. So uh, that the the number the higher the the higher the fill the no higher the number it means basically the higher the density of um down inside each of the compartments. So you can see there's stitching along each plate each uh, rib and it basically means that you don't end up with as many clumps which you'll get with synthetic bags as well as down bags. And I've used this now in the summer in 10 degree heat in the middle of uh, in the middle of yeah in the middle of the summer 10 degree heat at night in the middle of the night and I've used in minus four and five degree in the middle of the winter and it has never ever let me down since I've bought it I've never had a cold night's sleep I've rarely had cold spots um, I'm not saying that this is the only down bag or it's the only way to go just to be clear just it's just something that I have um, I've been incredibly happy with since I got it and it's the reason why I can use it all year round is because I, I choose I choose to use it differently. So during the summer, I'll open this up fully. It's a three quarter length zip, you can see. And I'll open it up fully and I'll use it as a quilt. I'll just throw my feet into the foot box and I'll open this all the way up and I'll start lying inside it just with the loosely tossed over me. And then throughout the night, I might rotate and just have it over the top, or I might just have it over the bottom and throw it over as I as I get warmer. Inside this now, I'll wear in the long long johns in the winter when it's cold and a t-shirt, and then in the summer probably just my skivvies and a t-shirt. And like I said, I've never been cold. I've never had a real issue with it. It's um, it's a it's a great bag. One of the concerns that a lot of people have with um with down is well it's it's a common question is what what happens when it gets wet i like i'd love the idea of a down bag but what happens when it gets wet you know i'm in serious trouble well that bag and a lot of the other um a lot of other down bags nowadays have a, a hydrophobic substance in the, that's laced into the down and it essentially means that it will repel water it's not waterproof but it will repel water, so your own sweat, um, showers of rain, drizzle, or uh, I, I, I don't know, but I would go as far as to say probably a little bit of moisture inside your, your dry bag or your stuff sack, and it will repel it. So if you, if you are looking to go down the route of down sleeping bags, I would always recommend, particularly in Ireland, to go for a bag that has hydrophobic material not necessarily dry down because I think that's exclusively the Kelty but some variant of it and um, dry down is probably one of the great the, 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 the most important prerequisites for me if I was choosing another down bag now the fill power is also important but what I found is the higher the fill with the same features as the Kelty you're going into the two three hundred four hundred region of euro for for um for a bag of similar spec and it's um I can't justify that money. I I can't um you will get smaller pack sizes, but I just can't justify it. Then the other the other query that and and concern that a lot of people um share with down bags is the maintenance. You know I I want to buy a down bag, but you know what about the rain and also. What about the faff that I have to go through when I get home? You know, God, like I'm gonna have to wash this all the time. And what if I wash it and it gets ruined? And I don't want to have to, you know, dry it all the time and make sure it's lofted up. And I can't leave it in the stuff sack. Well, to me, they're all things that you really shouldn't be doing with a synthetic bag anyway. And I'm sure a lot of you guys don't. What I do basically is when I get to camp, I set up. I've got my bivy here, which I'll go through in a second. 
And as soon as I get my bivy out and I've got my tarp up, I'll open up the bivy, I'll throw this in, I'll give it a quick shake, I'll leave it there for the day and I'll close up the bivy. By the end of the day, that's fully lofted up, just like a synthetic bag would be. And um, it's got its, it, it, it's, it's at maximum thermal efficiency. If you don't, if you leave it in the stuff sack and just like a, uh, a synthetic bag, if you leave it in the stuff sack and you throw it out five minutes before you're going to bed, it, it won't have lofted. There won't be any air trapped in the insulation. So you'll tend to sleep colder. And because you're in it compressing the insulation, it, will, it won't have as much of thermal value. Um, in terms of maintenance when I get home, I just take it straight out of the stuff sack. I don't leave it compressed. And I might hang it up. Um, sometimes I'll lay it down flat or if I've got a shelf or whatever. It just depends where I'm storing my gear at the time. I'll just put it on a hanger or I'll just lay it out on a shelf and I'll leave it there. And that's it. Um, I know a lot of guys will put it in a hot press, which is uh, like where your boiler is, is in your house if, you're, if you haven't got a hot press. But yeah, they'll just hang it up in the hot press and just leave it. And that's all there is to it. You might need to wash them if you get it particularly wet or you're particularly mucky getting into it. I haven't had to wash mine yet. It still smells fine. It, there's no stains. It's just simply just down to uh, a good maintenance regime when you're out in the field. You just don't mistreat gear like that or any, don't mistreat any sleeping bag and then you'll be fine. There's no, no, um, there's no special maintenance to it. <laughs> the one thing I will say if you are considering buying the Kelty is that it's a tight bag, it's a tight fit and a lot of bags that are going to compress down small will be a tight fit um, so it's not, I wouldn't say it's um, I wouldn't say you feel immobile or constricted in it, I feel okay but if you're a huskier guy or you're a taller guy, they're quite a short fit as well so like that's a regular and it's I'm about six foot and I can sleep in it okay but when I put the hood up fully it's a little bit tight um, the large is probably the better way to go if you're a slightly huskier guy but bear in mind this is a, a, a down sleeping bag weighted down to minus six so you don't need to always have it zipped there might only be two three occasions throughout the entire year where you'll need it fully zipped um, well based on the way I carry my gear anyway um, yeah so if you have any questions about that bag or down bags, I, I've done a lot of research. I'm not going to say I'm an aficionado on the subject, but um, if you want if you want to have a chat about it, just hit me up with a PM or something and I'll be glad to try and help you guys. But we'll move on swiftly because we've, uh, we've waffled about this a bit too long. Uh, so inside that, I will use this, which is a new addition to my kit. This is Gucci in the Extreme. This is the Sea to Summit Aeros Pillow Ultralight. Um, again, <laughs> sounds like I'm an ultralighter, but I'm not. It's just if I can get something that's small and it's cheap, I'm going for it. So they're about like 30 euro. I'm not a big fan of using pillows. I camp pillows I've found tend to be ludicrously uncomfortable and you bounce around the place in them. But this is a really, really good really really good little addition to my kit. Um, it was actually Joe Price put me onto this and I've seen Davey using one too. Davey Brock Knives an admin on the page. I'm sure you all know him at this point but um, it's a it falls down tiny. It's a tiny little tiny little pillow but one of the cool things about it is a dual valve so you can inflate very quickly three decent blows and you'll notice that the valve's open it's not inflate it's not deflating and it's quite firm if you want to reduce the pressure in it, it has a stop valve in it I tend to use it quite soft and then if you want to pack down all together and you want to break camp quick just literally and that's it done. Joe has talked on his video about sleep systems about the larger version of it I think it's called the Aeros Premium I can't remember so if you're if you're a guy who likes maybe two pillows under his bed under his head at night and 
you know, if you're or if you're a guy who uses one pillow or sleeps on his arm, the smaller one's a better option. But I'll, sh I'll put the link to Joe's video in the description, and he can uh, he can explain the logic behind his choice. But I've only got this recently, and I have to say it's a really really comfortable pillow. It's probably the most comfortable of the camp pillows that I've used before. So previously I was just using my uh, jacket or fleece. I haven't got wet or damp throughout the day. I just roll it up and put it under my head. But I found that I was waking up with, with a sore with a sore head and sore shoulders. So I went down the route of getting the pillow, and it takes up absolutely no space. As you can see, you put that in your bloody pocket anywhere you want it. So that's a that's a really really cool little bit of kit. So I'm really looking forward to getting more use out of that now uh, over the summer. So I suppose next we'll move on to the bivy bag. So this is inside a dry bag at the minute. Um, it doesn't really need to be because it's Gore-Tex, but it is the US Army bivy bag, which is the exterior of the MSS, yeah, MSS, Military Sleep System. And it is camo which I'm not mad about, but you're not going to really get a military gear that isn't camo. But it's full Gore-Tex, uh, and it's enormous. It's enormous. You can, you can do cartwheels in the bloody thing. It's great. Um, I got this off, again, Joel's recommendation. I hadn't got a baby bag previous to that, and then when I got the damn bag, I knew I was going to need something to protect my, uh, my bag. And then as well as that with going to the ground and using tarps, there are times when water will creep in, be it along the guy line or from driving rain or if you set up on a little bit of an incline, you will have a little bit of creep from the water down the hill and you want something that you can trust. Now there are lighter versions, you can see that's, that's um, it, it packed, it's packed down quite small there for what it is, but it's a, it is a hefty piece of kit. It is quite heavy, um, but I wouldn't traded for the world. I had considered going down the route of the Snug Pack, yeah, Snug Pack Special Forces bivy, which packs down like smaller than that, about that size, and it's about like 90 euro and it's proper super light Gucci, but um I just it's tighter and I don't I don't really see the need to replace this at the minute. Um I, I just have this I wanted to, I, I really wanted to go down that route, but now now that I thought about it, I just, I don't. Like, what what's great about this is this thing is like an old friend when I take it out. And a lot, a lot of you guys have various um, various iterations of, of the, be it the, the, the Czech, Czech Army, the uh, British Army. And with this one, it has, this particular model has the side zip, which is a full side zip, so it's a, pretty much full I think yeah yeah pretty much full and it has snaps as well and you can get in fully inside this like completely cover yourself up and I've seen videos where guys are using this in minus 20 in the snow with no shelter and they're inside it and they're happy out it's a uh, it's one of these things where I just take out of my bag I throw it on the ground and I don't care and I know that sounds a little neglectful, but I don't care. I trust it. It's full Gore-Tex. It's strong as an ox. Um, I, I just, I trust it. Uh, when, I, when I put it down, I'll use this the odd time as a ground sheet even. Um, I've used it on two occasions for carrying stuff from one point of the camp to the other. It's, um, it's just something that is really, really, really versatile. And you can, in warmer months, you can use it as a, as a sleeping bag in itself. Because it's Gore-Tex, it's also breathable and waterproof, fully. Um, and if you don't trust it, you can just treat it with a, a water repellent uh, or a waterproofer like Fabsil or some of the spray waterproofers you can get as well. I don't know any other brands, so I won't pretend I do. But um, this one was treated with Fabsil by uh, Colin Reddy, actually, when I, when I, when I got it. And uh, yeah, it's never once let water in. It literally beads off. And it's just, it's a great piece of kit. Like I said, it's a bit bulky, and if I wanted to cut more weight, 
and bulk from my kit. I easily could by dropping this, but I don't want it. It's just not something I want to do at the minute. At the minute. I think if this fails, I might. But until that point, this is a beast. An absolute beast. There are plenty of other bivvies out there that are really, really good, but like in this thing with the sleeping bag, I can roll fully in it. This doesn't creep with me. I can have the thermo rest inside it with me. Uh, I, I've had my clothes, I've had my knives, bits of gear in there with me at night time when it's particularly bad with weather. And it's there's loads of space. So unlike a lot of bivvies that tend to be quite constrictive and quite tight. And there are things to consider with, with tighter bivvies is that sleeping bags and like I said with loft is, is about trapping air and the insulative properties of sleeping bags in the same way as a sleeping bag with a bivy is you need to create voids of space that the, the air will warm up inside them and when you've got a tight bivy bag and your sleeping bag is touching that bivy bag constantly there's no void so your cold air on the outside is transferring directly to your sleeping bag and when that happens if you are touching the inside of your sleeping bag the cold air is transferring straight through your sleeping bag into you and you end up getting cold spots. I think a lot of times people will experience cold spots in their, shi their, their ships, their hips, their knees, their shoulders or their feet because of the pressure points between the cold air or the cold ground, the bivy bag, the mat and the sleeping bag. It's not because the insulation in your sleeping bag is crap or because your term arrest is crap it's a simple case where there's not enough air being created. Now, a thicker thermorest will do that, but also things like foil blankets are a great way of creating a, a stop barrier for cold. But, um, yeah, so I think creating more space when you're in a, bit, in, in a sleeping bag with a bivy bag, or even a sleeping bag in general, is, is important. So try to, get, try to get bags, sleeping bags and bivy bags that are as roomy as possible um, and yeah and from there you'll, you'll start to notice a difference with how much heat you can hold and how low your bag can go in its temperature range uh, without without failing on you actually that's one thing I want to just go back to the sleeping bag very quickly sleeping bags when you're buying them if it says it's rated to minus 20 it's not there are very very few brands that are very true to the temperature rating on them the one thing I will say about the Kelty is that, as I said, I slept down at minus 5. It's rated to minus 6 Celsius. And it has now, I have not been cold. Its comfort rating is minus 6, and it's fine. North Face bags, I've noticed, to have, have uh, it's tend to have the same sort of thing. If it says it's rated to 0, and it's rated to 0. But there are a lot of bags out there where it's not the case. So if you are buying a sleeping bag in general, if the temperature rating says minus 5 on it, I would suggest that that bag is probably only going to be good to 0 to 1 degrees. And then you can, there are other things you can do to bring up the insulation inside it. You don't have to not buy the bag, you can buy the bag and spend, uh, go to eBay and spend a few pounds on cheap um, British Army softies. You know, um, Joe's done a video on softies as well. And they, they, they're a great way just to bulk up the insulation in your bag. That you can take a three season bag to an all year round bag. Or a two season bag to an all year round bag. And they, they're, they're cheap. You can get them for 40 euro. And they're, um, yeah, they're really good. So there are, there are ways of pumping up the insulation properties of your bag. But I would just always be careful with temperature ratings of bags. Uh, they tend to be a little bit of a... A little bit of a stretch. They tend to stretch themselves in what they say they can do. But anyway, I'm waffling again, so we'll move on. So finally, this is an old friend. Now I've had this quite a while. This is the very old. I get this right. Thermarest, the original Thermarest. I what I think this is is the original iteration of the Trail Light Pro. Um. You can see actually that this has an irregular stamp on it. I actually got this 
brand new sealed in its bag off an Irish buy and sell website for 30 euro which I think was one of my best one of my best buy and sell sort of bargains so this is um, self inflating but like most self inflators you'll have to finish the, the inflation off it will inflate up to about 60 or 70 percent on its own I don't normally let it I will just take it out and blow it up they do say you don't shouldn't blow into it because the moisture in your air will or the moisture in your breath will condense inside it will form mildew which will eventually ruin the insulation inside it and will make it smell and and it'll make the material more brittle but that's just i don't i don't care to be honest with you that's just I, it's it's up to you how you how you inflate it i personally just blow the thing straight up but this is um a really 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 good um sleeping mat i've had it for two years yeah close to two years like I said, I got it dirt cheap. It's um, it has foam inside it in cellular little foam points, as you can see, and it's thin foam. And the idea is, when you blow it up, that creates air pockets. Those air pockets heat up, and I'm not going to repeat myself. The you, you know where I'm going with this, but. A good thermo rest with a good bivy bag and a good sleeping bag is um, is really a recipe for a good night's sleep, which is really really important. What I will say about thermo rest is uh, they're quite bulky. This one here in particular is 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 quite bulky because of the foam inside it, because it's an old version, and because it's durable. Um, I've never had any issues with deflations or pinholes with this. Um, I've known a lot of guys and I've seen a lot of reviews of video of, of thermo rests have, that are ultralights or the, the Neo Air or the Neo Air insulated or different versions of it, the Sea to Summer ultralights and um, guys tend to get punctures in them quite a bit because they're designed to be as thin a material as the, as the, as the manufacturer can get away with. Now, don't get me wrong, they're not flimsy, but this thing is really, really thick material. Um, again, like the bivy bag, I would probably replace this when it fails. And I would probably go for your ultralight option. I would probably go for a Seat Summit Ultralight or um, a Neo Air Insulated. Probably the Seat Summit, I'm not 100% sure. But <laughs> I think it's about... I think it's about about that thick when fully insulated. It's not the thickest in the world, and you do tend to get some cold spots and spots where your elbow or your shoulder will 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 touch the ground. But it's not it's not it's not the worst complaint to have. And for thirty euro, I'm it's not going to it's not going to kill me. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fall out with this. I've had really really good night's sleep on this since I got it. So. It's not something I'm gonna. I'm not gonna throw it away that easily or upgrade because it's not really an upgrade. It's just a, a weight cut. So yeah, it's a really comfortable piece of kit. So that basically is how my sleep system works all year round. The only thing that I wouldn't carry consistently is the hammock. I do tend to just throw it in the bottom of the bag sometimes because, like I said, it weighs nothing. And if there's a a lot of trees about and nothing really to sit on I'll just throw this up sit down and we're happy out but yeah it's composed essentially of a lightweight tarp down bag Gore-Tex bivy bag uh, fairly robust uh, sleep mat Gucci pillow very very high vis cord and shock cord for Paddy and yeah so that's that's about it so that kit stays the same pretty much all year round um i don't i don't tend to carry much more with me and that has a distinct advantage for me is that i know my kit um i know how it packs i know how to pack it so the sleeping bag will go in the bottom of my pack the term rest will go in the bottom of my pack along with maybe a liter of water or something quite heavy 
but they'll go down there because they're the last things I'm going to go for. Everything else is going to pretty much come out before it except for maybe my food. But yeah, I, I've gotten used to these now. I know them. And that's one thing that sleep systems really are is they're so subjective that it's a trial and error process. So you will buy kit and you will probably you, you might have two or three bad nights sleep. And if that's the case, fine. Change it. Um, but also bear in mind that sometimes it can just be how you use it. Uh, it could be the perfect bag for you that maybe you're you're not utilizing properly because you've got really really you've got loads of layers of clothes on and you've reduced those air spaces or you're compressing the insulation too much or you've got a really tight bivy bag around it or you're sleeping with a, a wind exposed to you and you haven't got a bivy over it that's windproof and it's pulling the heat out of you because it doesn't matter what bag you're sleeping in if there's a wind pulling blowing straight across your sleeping bag and it's exposed to that wind it will c completely drain the heat from you that will happen regardless um, but yeah so that's what I carry all the time so if you guys have any questions I would I'd be happy to answer them um, it's a lot to take in and again it was probably a bit of a waffly, waffly video so I think in the next one I'll just cover off my nighttime bag, so the stuff I carry for when night falls, uh, which includes stuff like um, hygiene and flashlights, stuff like that, and probably just my miscellaneous stuff, which will have like water filters and maybe some small maintenance stuff and chair tins and all that sort of malarkey in it, and then I'll show you the pack overall and how it all how it all fits. But like I said. If any of you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.